don't know how many of you know, but the um, NHS in England has now been abolished and as of April next year there will be no NHS. Lansley needed to do this in order to open up um, alternative funding streams. And actually what we're going to see a big move to is um, private insurance and uh, user charges with decreasing eligibility and, and entitlement. And they are What people don't realize here about um, private insurance is that what we have here now, yes, it's, it is helpful if you have to um, avoid a waiting list, that's true, um, but it's, it's only really available for acute care, it's not available for on, ongoing long-term conditions, so if, if that kind of care goes by the wayside with the NHS, private health care won't help. Um, the other thing is that um, it's somewhat being addressed by um, the um, health care that Obama passed, but insurance companies have typically not covered people with pre-existing conditions. Um, so again, if that kind of coverage disappeared from the NHS, um, private health care wouldn't help. The other thing that people don't realize is that private health care in this country right now is relatively affordable. Um, and that's because it's not essential. The minute it becomes essential, I'm sure it will go up. utterly convinced that most people like the idea that if they fall ill they will be properly looked after, that if any of their family fall ill they'll be properly looked after, that if any of their neighbours fall ill they'll be properly looked after and indeed that uh, we're, we, we all have a duty to one another and I think most people have a, a warm feeling about the principles and practices of the National Health Service. So I don't think it just binds the nation's wounds, I think it's something that we share and I think that the National Health Service uh, helps bind the country together and at a time when there are so many uh, sort of fragmentation forces at work uh, abandoning something which helps bind us together seems to me a very, very bad thing to do over and above its effect on people's health. We need to organise, we need to mobilise, we need to campaign. Here we now have a genuinely national health service. If the government gets its way, the people of Britain will face a postcode lottery of provision. In many places, that's already happening. In Cornwall, Serco was able to provide just one out of hours GP for the whole of the county at the end of last month. In Kent, dementia patients receive dramatically fewer drugs than those in North Lancashire. And in Kingston, Surrey, a general practice run by one of the few prominent supporters of the reforms, Dr. Charles Alessi, was found guilty late last year of removing 48 elderly and disabled patients who were deemed too expensive to care for. Spending has not crashed yet, but it's going to crash. It is going to crash, because why wouldn't it? Uh, the, the cost of everything is going up, and it's zipping up. Uh, and the number of unemployed people is certainly going to rise. Uh, 
The number of people who are sacked from public service jobs and then become re-employed by privatised jobs, that is unknown. But one thing is quite sure, is that the way you make profits from taking over what used to be a public service is that you employ fewer people to do more work. Uh, and that, obviously, it can't soak up all those people. So that's even on the most optimistic interpretation, uh, there are going to be many, many more unemployed people. And a lot of them are going to be young people whose whole lives are going to be ruined by this. Uh, many of them will never recover, quite apart from the increased suicides and early deaths and so on, which we know are associated with unemployment.